Hey guys, welcome to your next tutorial, and in this tutorial we are going to load some images into our game. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is actually get some images uh, that we want to load. So what you can do is Google Open Game Art, and there's this site called OpenGameArt.org. It has a bunch of uh, game art that people have made that is completely open for you to use. All you have to do is give credit to the artist. You can even uh, use it in games that you want to sell. Uh, and now the pack I am using is this uh, Jimmy Jump pack. I think the uh, textures are kind of cool and we could like, you know, maybe make a little platformer with it. Uh, but for now we're just using it uh, as an example texture so that we can actually uh, test our image loading. So I went ahead and downloaded this zip file. Uh, I downloaded it to my desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and drag it over to our graphics tutorials uh, folder. But first, I'm going to make a new directory in here called textures. So let's say textures. And then in the textures uh, directory, I'm just going to grab the Jimmy Jump Pack and paste it there. So if you open up the Jimmy Jump Pack, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see the preview and sample. Uh, you can go ahead and get rid of those. You don't need those. You're going to see license.txt. Do not get rid of that. You need to hold on to this. This actually gives credit to... Uh, no. This actually gives credit to the artist, and it looks like he kind of messed this up, so we can just fix that for him. We can say credit goes to 1001.com. There we go. So you want to make sure you include that or you're not properly giving credit to the guy who made this. Now we have three folders here. We have PNG, which holds all of the PNG files for all the textures. Now PNG is a compressed image format that is, lo is lossless meaning that there is no quality loss from the compression. If you were using JPEGs, you would have quality loss and you could see little artifacts and blurriness. Uh, so PNG is a really, really good texture format to use for games. There's other texture formats like DDS and things like that. I'm just going to teach you how to load PNG in this tutorial uh, since it'll be much simpler and we can do it really quickly. So we also have a sprite sheet folder. You'll see we have a little sprite sheet also known as a texture atlas here. We're not going to use this simply because we're going to want to actually generate our own sprite sheets because perhaps we don't want to use all these textures. There's no sense in us loading all of these textures into memory. Not to mention we might want to combine other textures from different packs together or write our own new textures and things like that. And it's kind of a pain to directly edit a sprite sheet like that. Uh, we could use a sprite generator program but in, or a sprite sheet generating program, but instead what we're going to do is write it into our game eventually. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete the sprite sheet folder. And there's also a vector art folder. I'm also going to delete that. We don't need vector art. At least I'm not going to be teaching it to you. We're just going to use plain all PNG and it should work just fine for us. And actually, how, how's the resolution? I didn't really even look at what the resolution was like. So these are pretty low resolution, so they might be a little blurry if we make them really big. But you know what? That's okay. This is just going to be a little simple game concept. So here's our textures. Now we need to actually settle on uh, how we're going to load our images. Uh, so if you Google OpenGL image loading, it'll bring you to this image libraries OpenGL. If you click on here... It's going to bring you to a lot of different image libraries you can use. Uh, one of the popular ones that one of my friends uh, uses is the uh, Soil Library. Uh, he used it for uh, the voxel editor for Seed of Andromeda that we're working on, and it seems to work pretty well. So if you want to use that, go ahead. What I'm going to be teaching you is just this load PNG. It's a very lightweight and small library for loading PNG files. It has no dependencies. You just pretty much pop it into your game. Uh, and it's open sourced, of course. All you got to do is uh, mention that... Um, you used it, just you know, give credit. You, you basically just have to say, uh, you know, thanks to Pico PNG or, or Load PNG uh, for, for the code. Just don't pretend like uh, you wrote the code yourself. So there's two different things we can use. We can use Load PNG, which has an encoder and a decoder, or there's just Pico PNG.cpp. This is just a single file that has uh, all the code for loading in a PNG file. Since we don't really care about saving a PNG right now, uh, we can just use this uh, Pico PNG file. So let's go ahead and go into our game here, graphics tutorials, and we're going to make a new source or a new header file. And let's call it a uh, new item. We'll call it picopng.h. And how does, how does it spell? Uh, lowercase p. So picopng.h. And let's also make a picopng.cpp. New item cpp file, and pico png.cpp. All right, so here's what's going to load our, our little PNG file. And uh, the reason we're using code uh, that somebody already wrote is because just look at it. It's quite complicated. This is not something we want to write ourselves. PNG is a compressed format. It's quite complicated. 
using already written code just saves us a lot of time. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. This is a solved problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and I opened up this Pico PNG page. I'm gonna type Control A to highlight everything, and then I'm gonna type Control C, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in Pico PNG.cpp. Um, and down here at the bottom, this is just an example program. Starting from here, we can just delete all that. We don't need that. Okay, so here is all of Pico PNG. It has the uh, little license here at the top. Uh, so it's basically just telling you, you know, don't claim this is yours, this is fine. Uh, don't remove this notice and, and you should be fine. Uh, so here we go. Now we need to make us a little header file. So everything is enclosed in this one function right here. So all we need to do is put this header, this function in the header file. Uh, so I'm going to copy it into picopng.h like this. And we're going to make it an extern, right? Because whenever, remember, whenever you have a uh, like a global scope function that's defined in a different file than your header within your declaration, you need to use the extern keyword. Uh, and since we're using vector in the header now, we need to include vector, and that will fix that little error there. And so you'll see these these are default parameters. I think I taught you default parameters. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, since uh, the, the way default parameters work is you only do the default parameters in the forward declaration, then down here we don't need to put the default parameter here and convert to alpha like that. So all you got to do is get rid of that and have the extern up here, and we should be good to go. Hopefully, we will see. Uh, so there is Pico PNG. Now let's make a uh, actual texture uh, struct for OpenGL textures. We're going to make a new item. It's just going to be a header file because it's just going to be a struct. It's not going to really have any methods. It might have one method. And we'll call this OpenGL texture. We'll just call it a GL texture. There we go. So let's go to gltexture.h and we're going to say struct GL texture. Let me zoom in here. And so what does a OpenGL texture need? Well, just like any other OpenGL object, it needs a GLUint ID. ID like that. And it also, uh, a, a useful thing for us to have is the width and height. Now this is actually all we need, just the ID. And remember we need to include glue to get that uh, GLUint definition. So all we need is an ID to be able to use the texture, but it could be useful for us to actually have a width and a height as well. So we know the dimensions of our texture. So we're going to go ahead and store that too. That's optional. So int width, int height. There we go. So that is our GL texture struct. We might expand this in the future. We might maybe give it a method or two, but we probably we probably won't. So here's our GL texture. Let's go ahead and now create another class. We need a class to actually load images. So IO Manager is a class that just gives us some basic file operations like reading a file into a buffer. The image loading class will actually do things like explicitly load a PNG into an OpenGL texture for us. So let's go ahead and make a new class. Add class. This will be another static class, and we're going to call it image loader and finish. So since it's a static class, we don't really need constructor or a destructor. They won't be doing anything important, so we can delete those. There we go. So now let's make a function just called load PNG. It'll be a very, very simple function. Uh, so we'll make it return a, a GL texture. So to do that, we need to include GL texture.h. There we go. So it's going to create us a GL texture, and we're going to call it load PNG. So it's going to need some parameters, and I'll try to think of what all the parameters need to be. Uh, it's going to need a file name, of course. So we're going to say std string file name, file path. And let's go ahead and say include string here. All right, so we have a file path, and... Um, that's actually probably all we need for now. We are probably going to add some more uh, parameters for sure. So let's go ahead and copy that into the CPP file like that. And let's go ahead and say image loader colon colon load PNG. So this is our function that's going to create us a GL texture and return it. So first let's create a, a local GL texture. Now we are going to make a GL texture on the stack and return a copy to it. That's not the most efficient way, but since a GL texture is only just a few bytes here, we just have uh, three four byte quantities, so 12 bytes, it's, it's not really a big deal to make that copy. It's, it's perfectly fine. So we're going to say GL texture uh, texture 
So let's go ahead and initialize all of the values for GL texture to zero. And I think I taught you this, a trick to do that with structs is to say equals and then the curly braces right here. This will just initialize everything to zero for us so we don't have to manually do it. All right, so that, cre that creates our little texture object. Now we need to actually load uh, the PNG with Pico PNG. Now if we go to the header file, we can see the little definition here. Uh, so this is decode PNG and it's not in a namespace or anything like that. So what this does is it takes a out image vector of unsigned chars. So this is just a, a char of uh, basically RGBA values for red, green, blue, and alpha. And it fills it with data from a PNG file. Uh, we have an unsigned long image width and image height here. This will, these will be returned to us. It's going to basically tell us the dimensions of it. We have a const unsigned char star in PNG here. Now this in PNG, uh, I believe that is just the actual uh, PNG data that we are going to be loading. And here it actually tells us a pointer to the buffer of the PNG file in memory. So it's going to write to a vector, but it's going to read from a char star. And then we have the size t in size. That's just going to be basically the size of our char star buffer here. And then finally, we have uh, bool convert to RGB A32. This tells it if it's going to uh, try to convert the data to RGB 32. Uh, it's always true by default. That's what we want. We want it to be RGB A32. That just means it's 32 bits uh, for red, green, blue, and alpha. That's pretty much your standard texture format, and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and use this function in image loader. So if we type decode PNG, there we go. Uh, actually, Decode PNG, lowercase, I believe. No. Decode uppercase, decode PNG. Did I actually include? I did not. So include pico png.h. There we go. So decode PNG is going to return an integer error code as well. So let's say integer error code equals that. Uh, so this will this will give us some some little error checking. Now let's go ahead and fill the parameters. So first we have a vector of unsigned char out image. So let's say uh, std vector, and we're going to say uh, for the type name it's going to be unsigned char, of course, and we're going to say uh, out. Uh, we'll just call it out for now. This is the the output for the decode PNG. So we're going to pass out in right there. That will get filled. Now we need an unsigned long image width and an unsigned long image height. These are going to be reference parameters. And remember, an unsigned long is basically the same thing as an int, but sometimes it's eight bytes instead of four bytes. So let's type unsigned long uh, width and height like that. Remember, you can declare two variables on the same line using a comma. So let's go ahead and say width and height. Now we need a unsigned char star in PNG. So what we can do is since we read, uh, since we have this function in uh, IO manager that reads data in to a char uh, vector, we can use that uh, to actually just uh, load it into that buffer and then we can pass it into the image loader. Now, uh, the way we wrote the read file to buffer is it's reading, um, uh, where are we here? And I'll manage. We're reading chars. We should probably actually read unsigned chars since we're treating this as binary data. So just change uh, the char right here to unsigned char. Make it just makes more sense that way because uh, typically with binary uh, data, you're just going to treat it as an unsigned variable. So unsigned char. Uh, that's all we have to do. Just make sure you fix that. Um. Oh. It has to be a char star here. So what we can do is uh, it, it's giving us a little error here. It says it needs to be a char star. So we basically have two libraries. One, use, one uses unsigned char, the other uses char. But luckily, since we're reading in binary data, we can read it in as a char and then uh, treat it as an unsigned char. Or we can, uh, uh, we can basically pretend that we're reading into a char star here since it's just a pointer pointing to memory. Uh, oops. We gotta put this in front of the ampersand there. So we're basically pretending that even though this is a buffer of unsigned char, we're pretending it's a buffer of chars. So we're going to read everything in as if it was chars, and then we're just going to start using it as an unsigned char again. And you can totally use that. You can you can totally do it that way with binary data. It's totally fine. Uh, the the type of pointer you use just determines how you interpret those bytes. It's not going to actually physically change the bytes that are in that buffer. So we are safe if we do it this way. All right, so let's go back to image loader.cpp. 
Uh, there we go. So this is taking a const unsigned char star in P and G. So that is a pointer to our data. So let's go ahead and load the data now. So we need a um, std vector unsigned char in. So this is the input data. We'll put that above out. And for in, what we're going to do is fill it with what we get from our image or our IO manager. So let's go ahead and include IO manager. And we're going to say IO manager, since it's a static function, read file to buffer. And we're going to read the file uh, file path. And the buffer we are passing in is in. So it's going to fill in with our data. And we, of course, should error check. Remember, we return false if this fails. So if this is equal to false, then what we should do is do a fatal error. So let's go ahead and include errors as well. Include errors.h. And we'll say fatal error failed to uh, load PNG file to buffer. Beautiful. All right, so that will read the file to the buffer. Now, to pass the buffer in, remember, even though it's a vector and it's asking for a char star, all we got to do is get a pointer to the first element. So what we can do is we can say the address of n0, and that will work perfectly fine. Now, the size is just going to be n.size. It's the number of elements, the number of bytes. And finally, convert to RGBA32 equals true. Uh, that is a default parameter that's true, so we don't have to actually put anything there. So we put a semicolon. Now let's go ahead and do the error checking here. So what we can do is say if uh, error code is not equal to zero, because decode PNG returns zero whenever there is no error, then we need to go ahead and print out an error message. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a fatal error with a custom error message. We're going to say decode PNG, here we go, decode. PNG failed with error. And we want to concatenate uh, the error string. And load PNG actually, I believe, has an error thing, but I don't think we have it. Uh, so we're just going to say the error code number. So we'll just say plus uh, error code. But we need to convert error code into a string, or this isn't going to work. Probably, actually, it might work. Looks like it is working. It knows this is a string, so it's concatenating it properly. But another thing we can do is we can convert an integer to a string with std to string. This will also give us what we want. So we are passing the string decode png failed with error and then the integer error code. Just so we have a little information about what went wrong. If this fails, we can look up that error code uh, on the, the website for load png. Okay, so that will actually decode the PNG and it will fill our uh, output vector here with all of the binary data that we want to use for our texture. So now that we have that, we can actually use it to create our OpenGL texture. So the first thing we need to do is actually generate the OpenGL texture object like we did with VBOs and like everything else. The way we do that is we say GL gen textures. We're going to generate one texture and then it takes a pointer to a GLU int. And for us, it's going to be the address of texture.id, just like that. So this will turn ID from zero into some other uh, unique ID for that specific texture. So that will generate it. Now we need to bind the texture and do some things to that texture, such as upload the data to it. So what we should do is type gl bind texture. And the type of texture is a two-dimensional texture. Uh, you can have three-dimensional and one-dimensional textures as well, but right now we're just going to do two-dimensional textures. So we're going to say GL texture 2 d And then we put a comma, and we just say, what texture do we want to bind? And the texture we want to bind is texture.id, not comma id. That will bind the texture. Now we need to actually upload the image data to the texture. So to do that, it's very simple. You just make a call to GL text image. 2D. So what we're going to be doing is taking our buffer of pixels, which is this output buffer right here, it's all the pixel data, we're going to upload it to the actual OpenGL texture. This will go to the graphics card and get stored in VRAM. So we're going to say, okay, what texture do we want to upload it to? This GL enum target, that is the GL texture 2D. Now it's uh, asking for level. This is what mitmap level? I'll talk more about mitmapping in a little bit. Uh, we're just going to say zero. We're just doing the lowest mitmap level. 
Next, the internal format, and we want red, green, blue, and alpha. So we're going to say GLRGBA. This is pretty much your standard format. Next, we need the width. So we're going to just say width and height, which we got up here. Next, we need uh, glint border, and that's going to basically say, do you want a border around the texture? And we don't. We're going to put a zero there. Next, it's the format of the pixel data we are reading in, and in this case, it's also going to be glRGBA, very basic. Next, we have this glenum type, and this is the type of data. And an unsigned char is an unsigned byte, right? It's just one byte. So we're going to type gl unsigned byte. And then finally, we need an actual pointer to the pixel data. So just like we did everywhere else, we're going to say address of, in this case, out zero. And that will give us the address of the first element of the array. Now you can't say the address of just out because the vector itself, uh, the start of the vector in memory is not the same thing as the start of the actual pixel data in memory because the vector has some extra header bytes uh, that give it a little information uh, that it needs. So to get the actual array of pixels, you always got to do the address of the first element like that. All right, so that will generate our texture and fill it with pixel data. We are almost done. Uh, one more thing we should probably do is uh, set some uh, parameters. So we're basically going to tell OpenGL a few things about this texture, how it should treat the texture. And the way we do that is we say GL text parameter I. And in here, we're going to say first that we want parameter I. There we go. First, we're going to tell it we want to uh, affect the GL texture 2D that we have bound. Next, we're going to tell it what parameter. And there are several parameters. The first parameter is GL texture wrap s and this is a texture wrapping parameter uh, it's basically just saying how do you want the texture to wrap uh, on, on one image like if, if we have texture coordinates that make it so that uh, the the texture actually uh, the coordinates of the texture expand beyond the edge of the texture do we want to repeat it do we want to clamp it i will show you this in detail uh, so if you're confused don't worry too much we're just going to type gl repeat right now and go ahead and copy this, and we're going to make a small change. The next line is GL texture wrap T, also going to be GL repeat. And I will go over this in more detail in the future. Next, we're going to do another texture parameter. And instead of GL texture wrap S and T, we're going to say GL texture mag filter. And this GL texture mag filter is, it's, it stands for magnification filter. This has to do with mit mapping. And what we're going to do is say GL linear. Uh, basically what this does is based on the size of the texture, how is it going to filter the pixels? Is it going to just use the nearest pixel, which looks really but ugly, or is it going to use linear interpolation? And we want it to use linear interpolation. So let's copy this again, and we also have a min filter. This is when it's, instead of being magnified, it's actually getting smaller. And in this case, what we're going to do is say GL linear and here's where mit mapping comes in. We're going to say mit map uh, linear. So what the heck is mit mapping? Uh, I'm going to probably teach you a little bit more in detail what mit mapping is. But what it is is it's when we take our texture. So if we go to our little texture files here, for instance, this little 72 by 72 pixel texture, it's when we take it and we progressively make it smaller and smaller and sample it at a, at a smaller rate when it's much smaller on the screen. Because there's no reason... Uh, to display a, a, a texture with this many pixels on the screen when it's really, really small. You're not going to get that much uh, resolution. If we type mit mapping into Google, I can probably find you a, a good little example of a mit map texture. So here's the difference between mit mapping on and off. If you look over to the left here, that's with no mit mapping. The pixels don't get filtered together or anything like that, and it just looks really, really terrible. On the right, it sort of like fades into gray, and that's because of the mit mapping. It's actually averaging the black and white pixels, and you're ending up with gray. Uh, and there should be an image of like a mit map texture here somewhere. Here's an example of a mit map texture. It starts with the main high resolution texture. This is the original, and then it generates progressively smaller ones at like half resolution. Luckily, OpenGL does this for us. We don't even have to think about it. We just say GL generate mit map, and we tell it the target, which is GL texture 2D. There, that's all you got to know about mit mapping right now. Very simple. Okay, and that is pretty much uh, the end. Let me think if I forgot anything. We did quite a few steps here. Uh, let's go ahead and now 
uh, return our object. So we're going to return texture. And just for a good measure, before we return it, we should always uh, unbind our texture. So we're going to say gl bind texture, gl texture 2d, and we're going to bind 0, which means unbind the current texture. Okay, so I believe this is all correct. I can't check it right now because we have a lot more code to write. In the next tutorial, we will go over this and actual, actually use it to load one of our textures and then display it in the game. And if there's any bugs, we will fix them in the next episode.